Coming up on Inside Michigan Basketball, a victorious Saturday doubleheader for the Wolverines, with the men rallying past Lipscomb and the women controlling things against Appalachian State. Plus, a check-in on Michigan football during the college football playoff preparations, and a whole lot more here on this week's edition of Inside Michigan Basketball. Inside Michigan Basketball is presented by Meyer. After a nine-day break, Michigan men's basketball was finally back at it on Saturday at Chrysler Center with Lipscomb in town. Wolverines had just dominated Minnesota, a wire-to-wire -wire win in their last game, and it looked like it could be more of the same for the Wolverines against the Bisons at Chrysler Center. Michigan jumped out to a 13-point lead late in the first half. It's stolen by Buff, and oh. here's Jed Howard, who goes behind the back, sheds Asman, and stuffs it down. Oh, Jed Howard with a highlight reel slam. And they were up by 12, four minutes into half number two. Buffkin drives in, splits two, banks, scores. Oh, Kobe Buffkin is seven of seven shooting Wolverines by a dozen. Then Lipscomb climbed back. They rattled off runs of six zip, 10 nothing, and then 5-0, thanks in large part to the red hot shooting of sophomore Will Pruitt. Right wing Pruitt, catch and shoot, desperation three is good. <laughs> he scored a career high 27, including five made threes. That last 5-0 run for Lipscomb made it 73-69 Bisons with four and a half to play. From there, it was all Wolverines. Right side Howard, over to Bufkin, right corner of three, got it. Kobe Bufkin's got a career high 22, Michigan down a point. 337 to play, Wolverines down one, McDaniel splits two, floater in the paint, got the friendly roll. McDaniel's first point. Around a hedge from Hunter, he'll shoot up along two left of the lane and cash it in. Michigan up three. The Wolverines limited Lipscomb to one of nine shooting during that run to get their seventh victory of the season by eight over Lipscomb. We came down and executed down the stretch. Uh, you know, Lipscomb, they had a great offensive uh, team, and, you know, they move a lot, a lot. Like, they have a lot of motion in their offense, a lot of backdoor cuts, a lot of screen and rolls. You know, we defended it uh, pretty well up to, like, mid-second half. Then we started to break down, but then we got it back together. Uh, it's also a team today that's resilient and that can make it through, you know, tough times. Uh, we're never going nowhere, you know. The fight is always to the end when the clock strikes zero. And, you know, they was up late in the game. They was up uh, late, you know, with less than eight minutes left. And we found a way to win. So, you know, just keep finding these ways to win. Keep building. You know, we're going to be a better team going into the new year. Next up for the Wolverines, a Wednesday night clash against North Carolina down in Charlotte. Last year, Michigan went to Chapel Hill, and they got blown out. They're looking for redemption this time around. Ready. I'm ready for that. Uh, they beat us bad last year at North Carolina, so, you know, I hope we get our revenge. Inside Michigan Basketball is brought to you in part by Meyer, official sponsor of Michigan Athletics and proud sponsors of local sports teams across the Midwest. Today's conversation with Juwan Howard is brought to you by Meyer. Make savings a slam dunk with Meyer home delivery and pickup. Coach, a 14-2 run down the stretch. What changed to allow your team to pull off this win? Defensively, uh, we, we stepped up and got stops when we needed. Um, it was important for us to not allow any back cuts because throughout the game, you know, that's what Lipskin generated a lot of their offense from, is from the back cuts. And then when we pulled triggers, they skipped the pass out to the perimeter. We sprint out there, and then they, they hit a three, or they shot fake three, or shot fake pull up two. So uh, it was good to see that our guys stayed mentally dialed in, uh, had to get stops when needed, and then at the same time finished on the other end, whether it was a layup, free throw. Um, but it, it says a lot about the gutsy win of this team. Kobe Bufkin really leading the charge in a lot of ways, offensively and defensively. How have you seen him take that responsibility, those opportunities to go out, whether it's verbal communication, making a defensive stand, or like he did several times, hitting a big shot? Well, Kobe, uh, you know, I touched on it before with him. I said, as much as I've watched him work out um, in passing or after practice or before practice, you know, I've always said, man, this young man, he's a, he's a grinder. And then I said to him one day, I said, Kobe, you're in love with basketball, aren't you? And he said, yeah, coach, of course. And that right there, you know, it's going to give you an edge. And for guys that's dialed in to getting better, 
uh, and he's that person. Um, whether it's on the offensive end or defensive end, he's always looking for ways to improve and also to help the team. And he's an all-in kind of guy. He's been that way since day one. Uh, when times when he wasn't getting the playing time that maybe he felt he deserved, he still was dialed in to improving and doing whatever he can to help the team and then waiting for his moment. So now uh, he's impacting in a lot of ways. He's been the guy for us that um, guarded Amani Bates and asked for that challenge. Um, he's also asked to guard uh, the young man Clark from, uh, India, uh, from Virginia. Uh, he's always asking uh, to uh, guard the best guy. Two games your team has had now without Jalen Llewellyn. Kobe's been one of the many who have had to take on some different roles. Yep. Doug McDaniel's played a lot. Tell us about what you've seen from the young freshman in these two games, especially down the stretch against Lipscomb on Saturday. Big time, big time. I told you guys early in the year, this young man is going to wow you. Uh, you're going to love Doug because he's competitive, he's smart, he's gritty. Um, it doesn't take him a long time to pick up things. And point guard position is one of the toughest in basketball because there's so many moving parts. You know, you got to see how to read the game, time and possession, when you can be you know, aggressive, when you can get your teammates involved, uh, how to run the team, how to keep the guys together when things are going good and when things are going bad. And he's been able to transition very well because he's, uh, he's been all in. He's bought in to improving, he's bought into the team. And when you have that type of attitude, you know, good things always will happen for you. Finals are just about wrapped up for your team, and then a few weeks where they can focus exclusively on the athlete part of student athlete. I have to imagine your young men are very excited about that. Well, Michigan, you know, it's the number one public university in the world, and it's a high academic school, so it's going to challenge you, and it's going to make you uncomfortable. And with that, um, our young men had to buckle down. Uh, and, and get into their studies. You know, they were studying when we were in London. We had training table, I mean, study table there. Uh, they've been studying all week. Uh, yes, some have been cramming. Some are prepared more than others. Uh, but it's nice to see that they are taking the academics seriously here. And uh, we're not going to let up. <laughs> they know that we're going to hold them accountable. But at the same time, I know they're going to feel great when the last final is finished and over with. And I'm sure there's going to be some celebration. <laughs> Coach, we appreciate the time. Congratulations. Thank you. Go Blue. Welcome back to Inside Michigan Basketball. Let's pivot to the women's team. They also earned a victory on Saturday at Chrysler Center. No issues with Appalachian State dominating a 28-point win to improve to 10-1. and Michigan really pulled away in this one by scoring the first 14 points of the second quarter. Emily Kaiser, the fifth-year senior, led the way with 18 points. Leah Brown added 16 to go along with her six rebounds and eight assists. Head coach Kim barnes Rico had a chance to get plenty of Wolverines, some playing time, nine different scores as Michigan won at 77-49 at Chrysler Center. 11 games in, how has this non-conference stretch with one Big Ten game in there, how has this prepped you guys for what's to come in Big Ten play? Yeah, I think in this non-conference, we've just had every experience possible. Um, we've had tight games, we've had blowout games, um, we've had tough, tough competition. Um, so I think it, we've kind of seen everything already. Um, some really good players, people you kind of have to lock down on. Um, all stuff we're going to see in the Big Ten. So I think it, it really just helped us moving forward into conference play. Throughout this stretch and everything, we've been able to work through, figure out like our identity and stuff. And I feel like the biggest thing is just learning ourselves. So I feel like this has done a, a lot of good for us. We're with head coach Kim Barnes Rico of Michigan women's basketball. Coach, 11 games in, your team's 10 and 1. What have you learned about this group from the start of the season to now? Well, we've had a much better start than I than I thought. I don't even want to say that. Um, you know, you, you're not sure how your team is going to respond with um, the graduation of Nas Hillman, um, Danielle Rausch, and Amy Dilk. And I think our fifth-year players, Emily Kaiser, Leah Brown, were like, we are not going to, you know, take our foot off the gas. We are, you know, we've, we've built a program, not a team, that's going to be successful year in and year out. But we want to show the rest of the world 
world that, you know, even though Nas has graduated, we still have a, a pretty good team. Um, so Emily Kaiser and Leah Brown have kind of taken that load as well as Maddie Nolan. Um, and they're our most experienced players. And I'm just, you know, I'm really happy that they're taking the younger kids under their wing and they're teaching them, you know, the Michigan culture, the Michigan way, and what it takes to be successful inside of our program. You mentioned Emily Kaiser, who she waited a while to officially make the decision to use that extra year. How much has she enjoyed being back? How much have you and the program enjoyed having her back? Oh, my gosh. Emily Kaiser, when she makes a decision, it's a process. Um, I've learned that about Emily through the years, and uh, that's okay. That's how she goes about making her decisions. Um, obviously, I was biting my nails and losing sleep, but I had to let Emily come to that conclusion on her own. Um, having her back has just been, you know, unbelievable in, in so many ways. Um, one, her, her leadership has just been tremendous. Um, two, her basketball ability has been off the charts. But, you know, for me as a coach, just watching her development from the time she's been a freshman till, till where she is today, I mean, I just sit back and, and it just warms my heart because she's worked so incredibly hard. Um, she's put in so much time. She's believed in the process and just continued when she didn't see results in the beginning. Um, she stayed the course and not a lot of people can do that. And now she's like the face of our program. And it, it just makes me so happy because for her career, you know, she was behind Nas and that was her best friend, but you know, Nas was getting all the attention and all the accolades. And now this, you know, kind of Emily has embraced that stage and is doing just a tremendous job. She's, she has such a presence, such a voice as a pro, uh, uh, for our program, um, but just performing night in and night out. So just, I mean, I'm thrilled that she's here. Um, I know it took a little bit of time for her to get there, but um, I, every day I have a smile on my face and I'm just so thankful that she's here. We saw what Layla Felia did last year as a freshman. What strides has she taken to go from one of the best freshmen in the league last year to I think one of the best players in the league this year? Layla Filia is off to an unbelievable start, and I'm so proud of her because she's put in a tremendous, tremendous amount of work. I mean, that young lady worked all summer. I mean, her mom has her up at 4.45 when she's not here to go to boot camp in the morning to work on her conditioning and her core. She does Pilates class when she came back in the fall at 6 a.m., so it wouldn't interfere with her shooting workouts at 7 a.m. Um, she's in incredible, incredible shape, and, and like you said, I think she's one of the most improved players in the league, if not one of the best players in the country. And she's a coach's dream. As a, a, as a coach, if you have someone that wants to be the best and is willing to work and is willing to watch film and is willing to commit and wants to learn, has a growth mindset, um, she's just been phenomenal. So she's one of the best players in the country, one of the best players on our team, and just off to a tremendous start. Lastly, one more non-conference game coming up, then Big Ten play. North Carolina is a Big Ten quality team. How ready is this group to get into Big Ten competition? Yeah, I think our conference, and not that I think, our conference is better than it's ever been from top to bottom. And I've watched it in my time here just continue to get better and better. I think we sent more teams to the Sweet 16 the last couple years than any other conference in the country. And now we have two teams ranked three and four, and that those aren't even Iowa. And Iowa has the best player in the country on their team, or arguably one of the best players in the country. So our league is phenomenal. We know it's going to be a bear. We know night in and night out, you know, if you don't bring your best game, you could you could lose the game. So um, playing a team like North Carolina, one of the best teams in the country, is a great prep for us, um, certainly heading into Big Ten play. Um, but also the opportunity to um, be included in the Jumpman Invitational, um, it, I just think is a phenomenal opportunity for the players, for our university, and what a what a special chance to, to travel with our men, um, to have our fan base be, be able to watch our men's and women's program and to be a part of Michigan women's basketball. Coach, continued success. Thanks so much for joining us. Thanks, Brian. Go Blue. Happy holidays. Welcome back to Inside Michigan Basketball. Well, last week, we caught up with Jet Howard. Let's get to know a few more of the Michigan men's basketball freshmen as we turn things over to Ed Kingerski. 
Let's start with point guard Doug McDaniel. For Inside Michigan Basketball, I'm Ed Kingerski. Ed, thank you very much. We'll talk some Michigan football as preparations for the Fiesta Bowl continue when we return here on Inside Michigan Basketball. Inside Michigan Basketball is brought to you in part by Meyer, official sponsor of Michigan Athletics and proud sponsors of local sports teams across the Midwest. Michigan football's New Year's Eve game against TCU will be the program's second appearance in the Fiesta Bowl. The first one was a doozy. Fifth ranked Michigan took on seventh ranked Nebraska on New Year's Day back in 1986 at Sun Devil Stadium in Tempe, Arizona. The Huskers led Michigan 14-3 at halftime, but the Wolverines took advantage of four Nebraska turnovers in the second half, outscoring the Huskers 24-zip in the third quarter. Quarterback Jim Harbaugh scored two third-quarter TDs to give the Wolverines the lead for good. Michigan won it 27-23. Michigan will hope to keep the good times rolling at the Fiesta Bowl this time around and advance to the national championship in the process. The 13-0 Wolverines have taken a been-there approach all season long. That's continued in the lead-up to the trip out west. We've just been here before. We know how we went out last year. We weren't satisfied. And we just know the feeling of walking off the field. And we're not trying to have that again. You guys just got to be hungry for more. And that's got to be the main thing we're stressing to ourselves right now, is you can't be, can't be content because the job's not finished yet. We will have the full recap for you on Inside Michigan Football on New Year's Day. Be sure to join Doug Karsh and John Jansen for all the breakdown of the Wolverines and the Horn Frogs. That'll do it for this edition of Inside Michigan Basketball. Happy holidays to you and yours. We send you out with a little impersonation, a little fun for the holiday season. Oh my God! Santa's coming to Santa! Santa! Oh my gosh, I know him. <laughs>